Now this Fox News alert, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo touting big progress during his fourth visit to North Korea. He says Kim Jong-un is ready to allow inspectors into missile sites and that a second summit between Washington and Pyongyang could be close. Earlier, he tweeted, had a good trip to Pyongyang to meet with Chairman Kim. We continue to make progress on agreements made at Singapore summit. Thanks for hosting me and my team. Weighing in now, retired four-star General Jack Keane. General Keane, in your long experience as a, as a military officer, I just wonder how you assess uh, the progress being made with regard to North Korea. Well, it's certainly some indication of progress. These are incremental steps, to be sure. After all, remember, at the very first meeting, we asked for a full inventory of all of their nuclear missiles and their nuclear sites and all their ballistic missiles and we wanted a timetable to disarm. That still hasn't taken place. And I think what has happened with our policymakers and the president also, they've had to make a, a major readjustment. We're not going to go have a rapid denuclearization of North Korea. North Koreans are not going to do that, and that's what they're telling us. However, they also believe incremental steps could possibly still get us there. And that's all this is. It's an incremental step. We're going to be able to have some inspectors. But the, the real thing that I mentioned, we don't have an inventory. And most significantly, John, I mean, we, we have not disarmed or disabled a single nuclear weapon or a ballistic missile itself. And obviously, that is the objective state that we're heading towards. Now, the second thing you mentioned is that they've agreed to have another summit. And, and that's probably a good thing to do. But I, I wonder if it wouldn't be wise to the president uh, to play around with that a little bit. In other words, not capitulate right away to that summit and hold it in abeyance to make some more progress from the North, from the North. get some more concessions from them to make that summit even more worthwhile. Well, we know this president uh, is not shy about moving things around. I mean, the first summit was in place and then he canceled it briefly because things weren't going the way he thought they, they should. Uh, it seems like with North Korea, very often it's one step forward and two steps back. Are we making progress here? Yeah, I mean, there, is, there, are, there are signs of progress, and this is, I mean, getting inspectors in, but it's, it's not a big step. It's, it's, it's a small step, to be sure. I mean, what, they, what the North Koreans are likely telling our policymakers is that, look it, you can't expect us to give up all of our weapons when we don't have any real assurances that our security is going to be guaranteed as a result of it. And that's why we've had nuclear weapons to begin with. And, and for us to have that guarantee, we need to have trust with you. And we can't establish trust with you overnight. This is going to take some time. That's what the poli I suspect the North Korean policymakers are telling our folks. But also, we got to be aware of this, John. There's a thin line between that statement and what that portends and also gaming us and playing us to get concessions from us and give up nothing, which is what they have always done in the past. The Korean War is still officially on. There was an armistice, not a peace treaty. And the South Koreans are talking about the possibility of issuing some kind of a declaration that would essentially end the Korean War. Would that be valuable here? I think it's premature, and here's why, because once we do that, have a peace treaty, and, and it would involve us, the Chinese, certainly North and South Korea, and we would represent the, the UN participants in that. Uh, the reality is, once we do that, I believe what the North Koreans would come back with is very strong and say, well, now that we have this treaty and peace and some degree of reconciliation, why do you need to have your troops in South Korea? And the troops in South Korea are a significant leverage for the United States here. They're obviously there for security purposes, number one, but they're also very much an item of leverage in negotiations. And I don't think we're at a place where we sign that peace treaty until we're well into the denuclearization process, and it's obvious that there's going to be North and South reconciliation. Uh, the North has, you know, signed agreements before, vowed to get rid of their nuclear program, and then broken the agreement. What is to prevent them from doing the same thing if there's another agreement and another, another summit? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, listen, there's nobody in our government or the South Korean government that knows for sure whether 
Chairman Kim and his people are going to denuclearize. We just flat don't know. I mean, they've made a commitment to do it. They're taking small steps in that direction to do it. But they haven't given us the things that we would want that would indicate that there is a true commitment to do that. So, yeah, absolutely. This could still be part of the, of the playbook of the previous administrations. That's, and, and that's all it could be. Or it could be something more. Most people who are closer to the process than you and I are believe there's something more going on here this time. Ronald Reagan's trust but verify enters into the equation here. Absolutely. General Jack Keane, good to have you on. Thank you. Yeah, good talking to you, John.